By now, chances are you've already seen someone reviewing the new Lego Batman animated series Skyline. And whilst I would love to get a Skyline for Clone Wars or Bad Batch or X-Men 97, today we will be sticking to the original six movies. I have picked three different planets to create Skylines for from Star Wars. I picked my favourite prequel world and probably my favourite original trilogy world and then of course we had to also do Naboo because it is 25 years of The Phantom Menace and I wanted to incorporate this into the Skyline. So we have three different Skylines today. I don't own the Batman one so there won't be a great comparison between them but I will be showing off a few features that I might have borrowed from that set. So let's start off with Coruscant. And of course, I couldn't build Coruscant without first starting with the Jedi Temple. I think this is probably the better looking part of Coruscant. And because this was the first skyline I created, I've used quite a few of these cloud displays that I picked up ages ago off the pick a brick wall and also tried to build a sky behind it. It doesn't work too great so the next two planets do have grey skies which is just the base plate that I've built them on and all three are built underneath each other or on top of each other in the case of Coruscant but as I said there is a few features I have taken from the Batman skyline such as if we were to pop off this main bit of the Jedi temple you can see there is a full Jedi high council from Attack of the Clones that is my favourite prequel movie. Let me know your favourite movies down in the comments. But I've taken the council from Attack of the Clones. Let's see if I can remember. I think we got Yorel Poof on the left. We then have the giant snake dude. We then have Evan Peel. We have... I can't... I think it's Sassy Tin. No, Sassy Tin is on the right here. It's Shark T on the left. Kiedi Mundi, Yoda, Mace Windu, and that's got to be Plo Koon. So we've got the full Jedi High Council that Anakin and Kenobi probably spend most of their time at the temple in front of for either something they've done wrong or being sent on a very important mission. And we've also got the spires at the top, which are created using the quarter circle tiles on top to give them the spikes. And then we've got a few slopes and other things to round it off. I've also created all of the banners and arches along the front, just using some snot techniques. And you can actually see just on the side here that they're just a bunch of one by two plates that have been flipped on their side. And then we've got a bit more detailing for the temple at the bottom. So that was really, really fun. And actually one of my favorite builds, there's this, there's the castle for the next one. And then I think the last build is just very fun in general. So stay tuned to see the last skyline because it's definitely probably the better looking out of the three. As we move across, this is filled with different interiors because exterior, there's not really much to look at. I mean, it's Coruscant. It's a bunch of grey buildings. This is actually two buildings. We have the Senate chamber here where they discuss all their important things. And then Palpatine's office is actually different from the Senate building. He did have one at the bottom of the Senate building, which was like an extra office. Palpatine had offices everywhere on Coruscant, by the way. If you go through Clone Wars, all the expanded universe stuff, there's not a building that Palpatine didn't have an office in. I mean, eventually he takes over the top of the Jedi Temple. That's like the ultimate office. But he did have an office in... This is sort of the Senate building where they all lived, even though... Padme lived in an apartment, but most of the senators lived in a separate building to where they worked, which made sense. You don't always want to work from home when your work revolves around politics. But as I said, a few different interiors. If we lift up the Senate building where they're debating, you can see there is a bunch of different pods in there. I tried to get a few characters in there. There's just not much room. And to include interiors to all these, I did have to size a few of them down. So I ended up for the next two skylines only including one interior, I think, for the both of them. But as I said, Palpatine did have an office in this building. So we can pop off that panel there and you can see a bit of dark red on the side and on the bottom. And we do have a purple and red stud indicating that Mace Windu and Palpatine are mid-dual down here, which I think is a really, really cool feature. 
And as I've said already, this is Padme's apartment building, so it only made sense to include a few scenes, mainly again from Attack of the Clones in this building. So you can pop off the whole length of this part here. You've got Anakin and Padme on the balcony. You can see the sky behind them. You then have Jar Jar, who's a bit taller than the others, welcoming Anakin back in the start of Attack of the Clones. And then you've also got Anakin on the bed with his saber out, destroying the worms, which was a little bit extra, but it was a fun scene to include there. And I was going to include a speeder chase elsewhere, but it did sort of break it up and they just look like random studs. You'll see a few more exterior details on the next skylines, but last and not least, I don't think, I think this is definitely one of the funner buildings. It hasn't come across too well, but if any of you can guess what this building is, I'll be very, very surprised. This is meant to represent the Opera House from Revenge of the Sith, where Palpatine reveals to Anakin that he is the Dark Lord of the Sith. Well, kind of reveals, I guess. He actually reveals it in his chambers, but we have the whole Darth Plagueis the Wise speech here. You can see Palpatine and Anakin both in their chairs and enjoying the opera, or at least what stories they are telling each other. So that is the whole Coruscant skyline. Again, this is only one of three. We have another two to go to, and I think it's only fitting we stay in the prequel trilogy next and go to Naboo. Now, this is definitely a more scenic world than Coruscant, and I think you can tell that just by looking at it. The left side is fairly empty, so I think we'll start off with the right. And our first Easter egg, much like the blips you see on the Gotham skyline, is actually the N1 Starfighters in the skies above Theed, which is the capital city of Naboo. And here I've tried to represent the castle as best I can. You can see a bit of greenery on the rocks. We've got a nice waterfall down here, which blends itself into the rest of the water and a few different buildings to make up the population of Naboo. Now, there is a slope here, and what you can see if I pop off this plate is the throne room of Naboo. You've got Padme's throne just there and two chairs next to them where they're holding some sort of official Senate meeting. And that is covered by this plate very, very nicely. We've got all these different columns sloping out and I really am a big fan of the detailing on the cliff face of Naboo. I think this feature is, again, with the Jedi Temple, you can see them side by side. One of the best features of these landscapes and definitely something Lego need to make in this fashion because I think even just getting the Jedi Temple or the Naboo Castle on its own without the rest of the scene would be really, really cool for some sort of brick-built postcard. So I really do hope Lego end up doing something like this for Star Wars and then we move across to the lake house. As I said, these are a bit too small now and too finicky to include any interiors. So we all know what went down at the lake house, a few trees on the side, but underneath it in the lake, I've actually positioned Otter Gunga and you can see there is a tri-bubble bongo submarine heading to Theed, which if you don't know, I'm building a massive mock in May of this bongo minifigure scale, a bit of the scenery from the underwater, and it's coming along very, very well. It's actually on its final week, so make sure you watch all the updates before I release the showcase. But we've got a few different bubbles for Otagunga here. Just building up the sea, we've got a few of the big ones with some smaller slopes and other shapes all around. And I've tried to position some of these pieces differently just to add a bit more detail in than just the regular patterns. You can see a sneak peek at the next skyline already, but we also have the Battle of Naboo, and I'm not talking about Qui-Gon, Kenobi and more. I mean the real battle here with the droids versus the Gungans. The Gungans are hidden under this bubble, and this is actually the Patronus from the Harry Potter line. And I think it does a nice job of just adding a bit more detail than the regular one. And you can actually see it amongst the green plates, which you couldn't with the plain one. We've also got some AATs. We've got one coming over the hill this way and one going straight towards the Gungans. And some, I think they're droid carriers, but I'll correct myself on screen if I am wrong. Bring in the droids to the fight as well as a few clouds to break up the grey skies. But... Naboo is quite a grey sky planet. It seems very bright and colourful, 
That's because most of the time we're looking at the trees in the background or the green grass of certain scenes. So I think it captures it nice and well and just one more look at the entire landscape. It looks very, very nice. And I'm really enjoying making these skylines. And for the original trilogy, I had to go with Endor. I don't think there's another skyline that would have looked just as good as Endor. Yavin would have just been a pyramid. Bespin might have been cool, but it would be hard to capture the fact that it is floating without just including Bespin and, I guess, gas? Nothing? I'm not really sure what else would go there. And even the Death Star would be very hard to capture like this. So you can see we've got an Ewok village with a reference to the Ewok show. If you do remember the Ewok animated show, you'll know that there are some... I guess it's a reference to Battlefront 2 as well, because you've got the little pixies that they end up using as a weapon in Battlefront 2, throwing at the stormtroopers, and I've dotted a few of them round. There is one on the far left side as well, so keep your eye out for that. The ground is muddied with these leaves to create these giant bushes that you see. I didn't really have any little green pieces to add detail into this, so perhaps it would have been better to have included some snot techniques. But again, with the space that I used for this, this is the best I could come up with. And in the ATST here, which is quite a smart design, you can see a brown stud up the top, and that is meant to represent Chewbacca. So hopefully the Ewoks don't release this log into the side of it, crushing this one, because Chewbacca is the one driving. We've also got a brown tile down here, which initially is meant to be an Ewok. I didn't add any more because the Ewoks are meant to be tiny, and this doesn't really show off their size too well in the whole model, but we've got Han and Leia, in Han's brown jacket and Leia's green poncho, just in front of this Imperial bunker with a few rebel soldiers hidden down the side. And I bet you know who that white stud is meant to represent. I'll give you a little hint just over there. But next to that, we've got an 8080, which is chasing down these two speeders. This was the hardest part to create because I already had the brown background and I wanted the speeders to stand out. So I've burnt off this part of the ground. Perhaps some heavy Imperial machineries come through, burnt down the trees, and that's left all the black scalding on the ground. And then we've got the two brown speeders pushing their way through all of the rubble. And now if I push this back a bit, you might not have as much glare on the pieces. And we also have an 8080 here, which has docked with this Imperial station. And you can see Darth Vader has just arrived his Imperial lander shuttle has just landed on the top. And I also included this bar as some sort of antenna over here. I'm not quite sure what exactly it is on the station, but it looked like a vital part of the silhouette. So I had to make sure to include it. Now I've nearly mentioned everything. I did say there was a hidden scene amongst this and it's actually up here in the unbuilt Death Star. I built this upside down. So the Death Star itself, if I can lift it without pulling it apart, is meant to be this way around, sort of, because it is incomplete, so I've included a bit of tile in, but whenever we see it in the sky of a planet, it's always upside down. So I really like that feature and included that, and if we remove that, you can see there is a gray floor, a purple chair, and none other than Palpatine sitting in his chair. So the Death Star is in orbit, ready to blow up the moon of Endor, or at least, take fire against the ships that are attacking it. I should have probably included some of them ships here, like the home one. But again, scale wise, I'm not really sure how I'd have done it without making the Death Star look absolutely tiny. So let me know which one is your favorite skyline between Endor, as you can see now, we've then got Naboo above it, and also Coruscant, which was the first one I showed you. Again, I used all the blue pieces for Coruscant, which didn't leave me any for the other two, but I quite like the grey skies and of course if this was blown out of proportion they'd probably be very similar to Batman and just use the coloured wedges instead because that creates a great design. Let me know if you do have Batman Skyline and if you would like to see a few more Star Wars ones, there's so many planets, I could create some smaller postcard builds which really do look cool and it's sort of similar to the different postcard size displays that we saw Star Wars try with I think it was BB-8, so I'll put a picture up on screen if you aren't aware, and hopefully we can see some skylines very, very soon. Let me know again what you thought in the comments down below, and I would appreciate a like if you did enjoy the video, and subscribe for more awesome LEGO content, and may the bricks 
be with you always.